Welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church and to our inclusive family of faith. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And this is, I'm Linda. We just wanted to say that we miss seeing our good friends at the WPC. And we're doing what you all are doing and staying here in our backyard and in our home. We love the Zoom calls and the Zoom meetings that we're getting to have with you, but we miss your smiles and want to get back together again as soon as possible. So, social distance, wash your hands, wear your mask so we can get back together. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Hear our call to worship. We come for God gathers us here with that community called faith, where the hungry are served first, where the thirsty drink life's water. We come for God welcomes us here into that home called grace, where the naked are clothed in robes of hope, where the stranger is embraced as the long lost prodigal. We come for God reunites us here, sisters and brothers, in that family called love, where the imprisoned model justice, where the sick are cradled in God's peace.
hear our call to confession. They are the promises stretching back into the dim recesses of time, yet as new as this very moment when we lose our way. God searches for us until we are found. When we hurt others, God brings us healing, healing to all. When we sin, God forgives us. Let us hold these promises close to our hearts as we confess those things we try to hide, praying together. We stock the food pantries, but brush aside those who hunger for friendship. We give our hand-me-downs away, but overlook those whose hope have been stripped away. We glad-hand those like us, but turn a deaf ear to our neighbors who talk funny. Forgive us, hope of the ages. You persistently search for us in the side streets of the world gathering us up and bringing us home so we may be drenched in the waters of your bottomless pool of forgiveness, watched over by your child, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, we come to these waters knowing that we are named and claimed as God's beloved children right here and right now. And who has the right to judge us? Only Christ. Yet Christ lived for us. Christ died for us. Christ was raised for us. Christ reigns in power over us, and Christ even prays for us. Thanks be to God, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia! Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hear our prayer for illumination. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from places to which they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, 
and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. Listen to this. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Last month in a suburb of Cleveland, a woman called the police on Jesus within 20 minutes of his arrival. And this wasn't the first time. People have also called the police on Jesus in North Carolina in 2014 in Indiana in 2015, and in Ontario in 2016. What is Jesus doing to cause such commotion? Well, he's sleeping on a bench under a blanket. In all these places, it was this statue, Jesus the Homeless by Canadian sculptor Timothy Schmaltz, attracting the attention as he was mistaken for a real person. We draw the church year to a close today with Christ the King Sunday. Next week we will move into Advent and the preparation to celebrate the birth of Christ once more. It seems appropriate that we, before we celebrate the humble baby, we remember his power and authority and how Jesus is not like the other kings, how his kingdom is not like the other kingdoms. Who is this king who sleeps on benches under blankets? What exactly is Jesus' kingdom like? We get a glimpse as Jesus offers this last teaching before he submits to the trial and death on a cross. And the story starts with the son on the throne in all his glory, tending to the flock of all the nations, the flock he knows inside and out. He separates them not by their profession of faith or by their denominations or doctrinal alignment. Instead, he separates them based on lives lived of mercy and compassion. Did you see the hungry, notice the thirsty? Did you tend to the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned? Did you show mercy to the suffering simply because you felt entrusted with their well-being, because you saw their humanity? As the king tells it, both the so-called goats and sheep are surprised by their own sorting. Both those who fed the hungry and those who didn't are stunned by the realization that Jesus is present in the least of these, that the king's face is that of the hungry, the thirsty, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned. Even the sheep had a so-called holy ignorance about the deeper meaning of their actions, of their embodiment of mercy. For Matthew's gospel, he is largely concerned about discipleship, about how we live out our calling to follow Jesus. 
In addition to the description of the kingdom here, in Matthew 5, we hear a list of others who God calls blessed, including, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. What does it mean to show mercy? What does it mean to be merciful in an age where it's shown, viewed as weakness, like Laura talked about last week with vulnerability? Mercy is compassion towards someone who is suffering. Mercy can look like forgiveness or grace or help, even when and maybe especially when people don't deserve it. In his book, The Works of Mercy, the Jesuit theologian James Keenan defines mercy as the willingness to enter into the chaos of others the willingness to enter into the chaos of others. I love this definition because it shows that mercy is often the harder thing. It is usually easier to pass by the suffering, to focus on our own pain or our own chaos, than it is to enter into someone else's. It's easier to pretend that somehow they brought the suffering on their own selves, that we would have made different choices in their shoes, that the least of these should somehow earn and prove that they are worthy of basic human dignity. If we're really honest, it seems like a huge responsibility to be entrusted with each other, to show mercy to our neighbors, when we're not that good at even showing mercy to ourselves, at dealing with our own chaos. We see this right now as at mask wearing, a simple act of mercy for our neighbors, for the most vulnerable in our midst, has been politicized and made all about me. The theologian Debbie Thomas helps translate this passage from Matthew 25 into our current context as she writes, Is not our sick king even now lying in thousands of hospital beds struggling to breathe? Is not our king hungry, thirsty, and naked after months of COVID-induced unemployment? Isn't Jesus even now languishing in a million prison cells, feeling utterly expendable as a coronavirus rips through our jails and prisons? We all so often pray that we want to see Jesus. and He's right here. Can you see him? Can you see him in our exhausted healthcare workers, in our overworked teachers, in our isolated seniors in their nursing homes? Can you see his face? Are you willing to enter their chaos, to be in relationship with the least of these, to meet their needs on behalf of our King? In just a few short weeks, we'll be celebrating that God chose to enter into our chaos here on earth through the birth of Jesus Christ. That God chose and God chooses again and again to be merciful to us, to show us that this is the way. I saw Jesus this week. A friend of Westminster, someone who knows us and has participated in activities with us but is a member elsewhere, reached out this week for a Zoom chat. Coming off a week of rest, I thankfully said yes, even as that voice of scarcity within me said I didn't have time. She had a fairly simple question for me, but it was clear that what she really needed was someone to enter into her chaos, to understand her, to see all that she was juggling, to affirm that she was a beloved child of God and that there was a place for her and her family in God's kingdom. As I wondered why she had chosen me of all people to talk to, it became clear she knew I was familiar with chaos. She knew I understood what it was like to be entrusted with each other, 
to depend on others, to rely on the mercy of our big, big family in Christ. As we come up on Thanksgiving, I'm grateful that so many of you have entered into each other's chaos, that mercy is so freely and readily available at Westminster through Jesus Christ, that anyone who encounters us knows that. Mercy matters. At Westminster, we know we can share in this chaos of each other's life because it's a two-way street that we show mercy and receive mercy. We enter into someone else's chaos as they enter into ours. That is one of the many gifts of church. When we are able, we show mercy When we are in need, we receive mercy. We are entrusted with each other. To feed, to share, to cover, to nourish, to comfort, to show mercy to those inside and outside the body of Christ, these are the markers of Christ's kingdom. This is what it looks like when we live into our calling to be entrusted with each other and entrusted to God. That is what it looks like to see Jesus in the least of these. You see, besides calling the police, there have been other reactions to Jesus the homeless statue. In Buffalo, New York, people in the community started leaving gifts of food, money, books, scarves, and caps on the statue. Five years after its installation, it's now part of the church's Garden of Love, where they have free items available for anyone in need. Is this not the picture of mercy and compassion? Rather than being seen as a problem for someone else to deal with, the least of these in Buffalo are seen as their family in need. The church knows that we are entrusted with each other. So on Monday, be sure to watch your email and our Facebook page for ways you can care for the least of these right here this Advent season. We will have contactless opportunities, like dropping off new and unwrapped gifts for our annual toy drive for foster children, or filling a welcome home basket for an Arlington resident moving from a shelter to an apartment. If your risk budget is a bit higher, we will also have volunteers at our outdoor mobile food pantry, where we served over 400 families this month and at Mission Arlington for their Thanksgiving distribution and Christmas store. We know that this pandemic has made some of our sisters and brothers more vulnerable than ever. And we hear from Jesus Christ that we are entrusted with each other, that following him means caring about the least of these, that discipleship looks like a life of mercy even to the undeserving, even to our own selves. It's a life of mercy, a mercy that we can give because we have first received it from our King of glory, Jesus Christ. So let us celebrate our merciful King to whom all honor and glory is due our judge who is not afraid of mercy, who is not afraid to enter our chaos. Let us pray for his kingdom to reign, a kingdom where we are entrusted with each other because we all belong to God. Let us stay the harder path of caring for the least of these, of seeking the face of Jesus in the vulnerable this Advent and Christmas. That is both the gift offered to us and that we can offer our King, living into our call to be entrusted with each other. Amen. Let us gather around our King's table to lift up the prayers of our community and our world. 
searcher of the scattered, where the bullies and biased have gorged themselves at cruelty's banquet, you will serve them justice for dessert. Where the wounded are turned away by indifference, you will bandage them in the swaddling clothes of hope where the hungry press their foreheads against the windows at Shea Plenty, you will open wide the doors, having made reservations for us all. We particularly ask that your presence and your inclusive wide arms be known in the wake of the two hurricanes in Nicaragua. Our living water friends are still assessing the damages to their homes, businesses, and water installations. We ask that they see your face in the helpers, in their neighbors, and in the least of these as they continue to serve even in their own chaos. Bringer of mercy, when we would push the outsiders farther away, you pull them closer to your heart. When we would shove the next to nothings aside to get to the front of the line, you pick them up to keep them next to you. When we scatter our gifts, throwing them away on foolishness, you gather them up and give them back to us, saying, Here, try again. Gather up into your arms of comfort our tired health care workers who are facing yet again another surge of COVID-19. Protect all our essential workers and keep people safe over the Thanksgiving holiday. Spirit of common sense, as soon as we wander into the shadows of selfishness, you open the eyes of our hearts so that we can see that place called home. As soon as we think we can find you only in the rich and powerful, you humble us with the grace of Jesus. God and community, holy in one, gather us into your presence as we continue to pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The presentation of our lives and offerings. In gratitude for our shepherd king and to care for his flock in his name, we offer up our lives in service to the hungry, thirsty, naked, and sick. Pause worship to offer your gifts online and through the mail. Happy New Year's Eve, friends. We look forward to starting Advent. We have made it through another year in the life of the church together. We start hanging the greens, start looking for those signs of hope, peace, love, and joy. And now as you go out into the world, have courage in the face of chaos. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people, loving and serving and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Amen.